Marie Antoinette, an Archduchess of Austria, was the 15th and penultimate child of Francis I, Holy Roman Emperor and Empress Maria Theresa. In April 1770, upon her marriage to Louis August, heir to the throne of France, she became Dauphine of France. On 10 May 1774, when her husband ascended the throne as Louis XVI, upon the death of his grandfather Louis XV, she became Queen of France and Navarre, title she held until September 1791, when, at that time of the French Revolution, she became Queen of the French, title she held until 21 September 1792. After eight years of marriage, Marie Antoinette gave birth to a daughter, Marie Therese Charlotte, the first of her four children. Despite her initial popularity, a growing number of the population eventually came to dislike her, accusing Laftrichienne, the Austrian woman, of being profligate, promiscuous, and of harboring sympathies for France's enemies, particularly her native Austria. The diamond necklace affair damaged her reputation further. During the revolution, she became known as Madame de Fissette because the country's financial crisis was blamed on her lavish spending and her opposition to the social in financial reforms of Turgut and Necker. During the revolution, after the government had placed the royal family under house arrest in the Tuileries Palace in October 1789, several events linked to Marie Antoinette, in particular the June 1791 attempt to flee, and her role in the War of the First Coalition had disastrous effects on French popular opinion. On 10 August 1792, the attack on the Tuileries forced the royal family to take refuge at the Assembly, and on 13 August the family was imprisoned in the Temple. On 21 September 1792, the monarchy was abolished. After a two-day trial begun on 14 October 1793, Marie Antoinette was convicted by the Revolutionary Tribunal of High Treason, and executed by guillotine on Place de la Révolution on 16 October 1793. Early life. Maria Antonia was born on 2 November 1755 at the Hofburg Palace in Vienna. She was the youngest daughter of Emperor Francis I and Empress Maria Theresa. Her godparents were Joseph I and Mariana Victoria, King and Queen of Portugal. Archduke Joseph and Archduchess Maria Anna acted as proxies for their newborn sister. Shortly after her birth, she was placed under the care of the governess of the imperial children, Countess von Brandeis. Maria Antonia was raised with her three-year-old sister Maria Carolina, with whom she had a lifelong close relationship. As to her relationship with her mother, it was difficult but both the Empress and her daughter loved each other. Maria Antonia spent her formative years between the Hofburg Palace and Schönbrunn's the imperial summer residence in Vienna, where on 13 October 1762 she met Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, then a child prodigy. In spite of the private tutoring she received, results of her schooling were less than satisfactory. At the age of 10, she could not write correctly in German or in any language commonly used at court, such as French and Italian. Conversations with her were stilted. Under the teaching of Christoph Willibald Gluck, Maria Antonia developed into a good musician. She learned to play the harp, the harpsichord and the flute. During the family's gatherings in the evenings, she would sing, as she had a beautiful voice. She also excelled at dancing, had an exquisite poise, and loved dolls. Marriage to Louis August de France Following the Seven Years' War and the Diplomatic Revolution of 1756, Empress Maria Theresa decided to end hostilities with her longtime enemy, King Louis XV of France. Their common desire to destroy the ambitions of Prussia and Great Britain and to help secure a definitive peace between them led them to seal their alliance with a marriage. On 7 February 1770, Louis XV formally asked the hand of Maria Antonia for his eldest surviving grandson and heir Louis August, Duke of Berry and Dauphin of France. 
On 17 April Maria Antonia formally renounced all her rights over the Habsburg domains, and on 19 April she was married by proxy to the Dauphin of France at the Augustinian Church in Vienna, with her brother Archduke Ferdinand standing in for the Dauphin. On 7 May 1770, on the Isle Oepus, an island on the Rhine between Kael and Strasbourg, Marie Antoinette was officially handed over to Comtesse de Noailles, her lady-in-waiting until 1775, in charge of the proper court etiquette Marie Antoinette was to follow. On 14 May, at the edge of the forest of Compiègne, she met King Louis XV, her husband the Dauphin, the king's daughters, Madame de France. Adelaide, Sophie, Victoire, the following day, her brothers-in-law, Louis Stanislas Xavier, Comte de Provence, and Charles Philippe, Comte d'Artois, at the Chateau de la Mouette, and on 16 May, her husband's younger sisters, Madame Clotilde and Madame Elizabeth, at Versailles. The ceremonial wedding took place on 16 May 1770 in the Palace of Versailles and, after the festivities, the day ended with the ritual bed. The lack of consummation of the marriage plagued the reputation of both Louis August and Marie Antoinette for the next seven years. The initial reaction to the marriage between Marie Antoinette and Louis August was mixed. On the one hand, the Dauphine was popular among the people. Her first official appearance in Paris on 8 June 1773 was a resounding success. She and the Dauphin were acclaimed throughout the day with climax taking place at the Tuileries before their return to Versailles. With her fair skin, straw blonde hair, blue eyes, beautiful smile and majestic figure, people could not help but be charmed by the personality and beauty of the not yet 18-year-old princess. On the other hand, those opposed to the alliance with Austria and others on personal grounds, such as the Comtesse du Barry. Louis XV's a mistress who had considerable political influence over the king, had a tenuous relationship with the Dauphin, relationship with Madame du Barry. Marie Antoinette's relationship with Madame du Barry was politically important to improve, at least on the surface. The favourite had been instrumental in ousting the Duc de Quassiel, who had helped orchestrate the Franco-Austrian alliance and Marie Antoinette's marriage and, in spite of Marie Antoinette's strong objection, in sending into exile in 1770, one of her ladies-in-waiting, the Duchess de Grammont, sister of Quassiel, under continued pressure from her mother and the Comte de Mercy Argento, the Austrian ambassador to France, who was sending Maria Theresa secret reports on Marie Antoinette's behavior, and in order to stop any French protest about the partition of Poland, the Dauphine grudgingly agreed to speak to Madame du Barry on New Year's Day 1772, although the limit of the conversation was Marie Antoinette's banal comment to the royal mistress. There are a lot of people at Versailles today, Madame du Barry was satisfied by her victory, and the crisis, for the most part, dissipated. Marie Antoinette never addressed a word to the Comtesse again, however, in order to please the king, Mercy and the Dauphin occasionally visited Madame du Barry. On 10 May 1774, Louis XV died. On May 12, his successor, Louis XVI, under the influence of his pious aunts, and to the satisfaction of his wife exiled Madame du Barry to the Abbé de pont aux dames in Mobile Lettre de Cachet. Over the next two years, du Barry was allowed greater freedom but she was never allowed to return to Versailles.